What's up? You here with Pell, Hot New Hip Hop. Uh, and uh, shout out to New Orleans and TFG. You already know. Growing up, originally I'm from New Orleans, uh, 8th Ward. Um, I grew up right off Gentilly, off St. Rock. And it was really a cool, a cool experience to grow up in New Orleans. I didn't know it at the time. I kind of took it for granted, really. But um, after leaving New Orleans, I realized that it's really a, a true piece of art. And the culture there is really just crazy. But uh, growing up there, my mom and my dad uh, used to actively put me in sports. I had an older brother, so like my brother would always play football and uh, basketball. And I did soccer and baseball. <laughs> and eventually I grew out of them and started playing in the band. I played trombone back in the day, like back in the day. I, I could still play, honestly. It's really like my childhood. And then like after my parents split, I had to make a decision during Hurricane Katrina whether or not to go to uh, Jackson, Mississippi or Houston. And I chose Jackson. Got to meet my mom's family like in the flesh because she's from Mississippi. And uh, it really made me uh, take a step back and appreciate the real things in life instead of like material things. And that's kind of how I got into music because the year before Hurricane Katrina, my dad had bought me a little beat machine. It was a Korg, Korg pad. It had like 16 pads and then like two little mode pads. And I uh, used to fool with it and make beats for myself that I've never really did anything with. But once I moved to Mississippi, that's how I actually got friends. Like I started producing for cats and they became my friends and slowly but surely I actually started spitting with them. And then I kind of left the beats aside. Right now I'm back in New Orleans. I uh, moved back earlier this year, 2014. Scene is crazy now. I feel like it's no longer like, you know, your, just your cash monies or even like your jet lifers. Like it's a bunch of different young aspiring artists that are influenced by everything from jam bands to jazz to, there's so much influence in New Orleans right now. It's just a great place to be creatively, honestly. And that's why I'm happy to be there. Pell is like a mysterious entity. But if I had to start at the base, my, my name is Jared Pellerin. So my last name is Pell for short. Um, and I originally got that name. I used to throw parties in high school and uh, people used to call me like Jay Pell or whatever. So it kind of stuck. And then in college, um, when I actually started taking this a little bit more seriously, I just took off the J so that people knew me as Pell, because like everybody puts J before their name. You know what I mean? It, stand, it can stand for countless things. But I just wanted people to get familiar with the Pell, like my family name. I started off with Pell Yeah on, a, on my Twitter and on Instagram, because I thought it was funny at the time. Like Pell Yeah instead of Hell Yeah, it's like, uh, we're not really cursing type thing. Eventually, um, it kind of stuck, because at one of my shows, I was like, I was like, let me get a Pell Yeah, and then everybody said Pell Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this every show. And people now think that that is my rap name. Like, they'll be like, oh, you're Pell Yeah, and I'll be like, nah, it's just Pell. I'm really just somebody who's chill and smooth, and I'm inspired by like the little things in life, and it definitely shows in my music, I hope. My favorite collab that I've done thus far is actually with Ludwig Garanison. Um, he produces for Childish and uh, various other people he does like score he scores movies he just scored the new top five for uh, Chris Rock but um, he's really talented and he taught me a lot about how, where you can actually take your creative energy and channel it into Ableton which is what he uses but like uh, he's very talented but I've been blessed to work with uh, Boldy James who I know y'all just told me was on here uh, uh, Curtis Williams, even though that was via email. PJ Morton, definitely the homie. Um, he's been a friend of uh, my family for a long time, so it was good to work with him. Same with Nesby Phipps. I've done stuff in the past with Phipps that isn't currently out right now. And as far as producers, um, I, I was also blessed to work with Tomas Barfold, and he's definitely the homie. He's from Denmark. like. He's so funny, because there's like a cultural difference, you know? It's like, when, when we first met them in the studio, it was like the, the handshakes were awkward and everything, but the one universal thing is like, the music is like flawless. And so it was, from then on, it was like one of my best relationships. Still to this day, I talk to Tomas like all the time. Floating While Dreaming, originally uh, when I started it, was just a concept that started from the movie Waking Life. Um, it's a documentary that I found online. The whole concept was, built around one's lucid dream and how he grew up within this dreamer um, and was experiencing new philosophies. It's basically like um, a fresh mind going out into the world and soaking up 
all these different influences. And I was going through the exact same thing because I had left what was the safe world as in college and dropped out and decided to be influenced by things that um, everybody in my circle wasn't at the time. So it was very like new to me just as this documentary was. So I felt like it correlated with me and I wanted to start lucid dreaming at the same time. Uh, I started writing my dreams out and originally I didn't even have the name Floating While Dreaming set in stone, but I was just writing down my dreams because I thought it could help me um, figure out where I've been and where I'm headed. I actually decided to call it Floating While Dreaming and I wanted to apply it to real life and how people in our generation actually chase dreams. And you have a point A and a point Z where it takes you to get from the moment of inspiration with your dreams and to the final destination or like, you know what I mean, the fulfillment and the manifestation. I started, and I, I still am, independent with just a small team, me, my manager, Chris, uh, and we've had people come in and help along the way, like my dad helps out and uh, we have a lawyer now. But it's the, the team has always been small and I feel like it's allowed us to make a lot of unique decisions because the brain, our brains are so similar and the creative direction is so similar because everybody understands my vision at the end of the day and um, everybody wants what's best for me, which isn't always the case in this industry as you, I'm sure everybody knows. I just signed a publishing deal to Pulse Publishing and um, that's really good because I really like them and basically they've, they've had a track record of making hits and I can't wait to just put our minds together and see what we come up with on the record side as well as, you know, um, how they can help me with networking and what else. But uh, if I were to jump into a label deal of some sort, it would have to be, it would just have to be full creative control for me and I would have to have that support, you know what I mean? It's hard to find those who actually and genuinely care about your vision and truly understand who you are as a person, so I would have to have I would have to have friends and I would have to have people that I can work with and talk to every day. I don't have to worry about is this person going to pick up if I call or if I need this done today, can, can they get it done? You know what I mean? I need those people who are the go-getters that me, Chris and everybody else who's on my team right now is, you know what I mean? And that's point blank simple because that's the only way stuff gets done. I just want to take over the game and then outside of that I want to inspire the game and I want to inspire the next um, Kanye, the next Jay-Z that can actually spearhead a revolution in the game, you know what I mean? That's really what I want to be a part of, and I hope that I'm doing it right now with my music. But in the future, I'm going to continue to do that, whether it's one to five years to five to ten years, five, ten to fifteen years, you know what I mean? Um, I just really want to continue to inspire. Um, and I also, I'm like a fan of nature, so I really want to build a park. If you haven't got floating while dreaming yet, you're asleep. Pun intended. Uh, just look out for the new project. It's definitely going to be nice and it's definitely going to be something that you can hold on to for life and live with. My guarantee. Shit, if you don't like it, you can come confront me. Um, I'm not saying that because I expect confrontation, but I'm saying that because it's going to be a good product. So my influences are everything from Kanye, Cuddy, Drake, the Jay-Z's, to like minimal groups, anything from pop punk stuff to like, like indie stuff. Um, basically just juxtaposing everything together and making it a little bit more street and more gritty. I feel like that's what like, like conveys to the masses and that's why a lot of people can connect to it from different genres. I just use a Rode NTK and like my MacBook and basically like learning how acoustics works and just like EQing and stuff as far as that. And when you make a mix, basically what you're trying to do is make it to fill in the space. So even incorporating this instrument, I know for Ball is Life, the steel drums were panned on one side, whereas the saxophone came underneath it. Well, me and my manager, Nitha Grit, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, I, he had sent me a couple beats, you know what I'm saying? And I, I played the beat, I'm like, oh, I'm like, nah, I like this one right here. Then the next day I called him, he came and picked me up. I let him hear the song. So we went to go lay it down, probably like two weeks later. You know what I mean? This was like around March. I want to say March, you know what I mean? And after we laid it down in March, uh, six to seven months later, you know what I'm saying?